If you're a beginner, one of the biggest challenges that you might face is in holding chords correctly in order to get a good sound. Now, this is something we all struggle with at first, but over time, with lots of practice, it becomes second nature. And then, at that point, it's really just as easy as it looks. As we progress with this course, I'll be teaching you quite a few chords, and you might want to refer back to these tips if you need extra help along the way with your chord changes. Be sure to relax your left hand as much as possible. Arch your fingers so there's a natural curve bending at the first joint. Don't flatten your fingers all out like this. If your fingers are flat and you're making chords, you're going to sound like this with all deadened strings. Um, instead, what you want to do is arch your fingers. Hold down the chord with the tips of your fingers to get a good clear sound on all the strings. Place your fingers on the frets in order, beginning with the first finger, your index finger. And after you find your first position, then find the correct position for your second finger, and so on. As you gain more experience, it'll become second nature to just go directly to a chord and hold all the fingers down at the same time. But as you're learning, be patient with yourself and find one finger position at a time. Think ahead to the next chord, using anchor points for common fingerings if possible. Now, as an example, a couple of the first chords you'll be learning are F and G7. The F chord is played like this, and the G7 is played like this. You can see that for both of those chords, the first finger holds down the second string at the first fret. So when you change between those two chords, you can use that first finger as an anchor point, and that makes the trans transition much easier. And try sounding out each note of the chord ind individually to, to be sure it's clear. Just play the string slowly, one at a time, while you're holding the chord. If a note doesn't sound right, just take a look and see what the problem is. Maybe you're not holding the string down hard enough, or possibly another finger's touching a string and causing it to deaden the sound. But if you'll look closely at your fingers and listen, you can find the problem and correct it. It's easy to understand these concepts, but developing the muscle memory to form chords and change between chords takes time. So just realize that from the beginning. Be patient and don't get frustrated. Finally, let's talk about reading chord diagrams. As you can see on the monitor, each horizontal line represents a string. And don't forget that as you're holding your uke in playing position, the first string is the one nearest the floor. And below the chord diagram will be the fret numbers. All the chords in this beginner course will be played on the first four frets. But later on, as you learn chords up the neck, and go higher than those first four frets, those numbers are going to change. Most people would agree that the C major chord is the easiest to play on the uke, so let's take a look at the uh, diagram for C major. Uh, at the top of the diagram is the name of the chord. Remember that major chords are commonly just referred to by the letter name, so it's not necessary to say major every time. And underneath the diagram, you see that it's played on the first four frets. In the first string, you see a dot on the third fret, so that's where you'll hold the string. Just count up to the third fret, the first string, and hold that position. For now, it doesn't matter which finger you use. We'll talk about that later when you're actually learning the chords. You'll notice that for the second, third, and fourth strings, there's a dot all the way over on the left side, uh, to the left of the diagram. A dot in that position means that a string is played open. That is, you'll just play the string without holding anything down. And that's what makes the C chord so easy to play, since it's only necessary to hold down one string. 
So when you hold the C chord, it should sound something like this. The one final note about chord diagrams. It's actually more common to see diagrams with strings being vertical rather than horizontal. So a C chord would more often look like this. Either way works, since the point is to teach you the chord. And I would have used the more common method here, but honestly, I wanted to use this horizontal screen behind me, and I just couldn't fit it in without a lot of wasted space. I think you'll find that even though they're oriented differently, you'll be able to read either one interchangeably with just a glance once you're accustomed to reading chord diagrams.